brauchen dringend einen V1-Luftschlag auf diese Position. Bad Sales, a dwindling player base and political drama. Hi guys, this is Matthias, and yes, Battlefield 5 was far from the success that EA and DICE hoped for and expected. So, what went wrong? Well, the political drama that I mentioned is something that I'm going to bring up later on in the video, but first I'd like to stick to the gameplay. Now, there are a few aspects of the game that is different from the recent games in the franchise. Most people that play Battlefield 5 and were interested in buying this game are people that have played one or more of the games in this franchise in the past. So now, one of the things that happens with the games that are successful enough to create a series of games that, in the case of Battlefield, spans over several years. As a matter of fact, it's going to be two decades in the year of 2022. Now, what happens with a series like this is that people have expectations. Those expectations are based on the previous games. Now, to some degree, we want to recognize the new game based on our previous experiences. In a Battlefield game, we expect to have the majority infantry players, and we expect to have maps that are relatively big compared to other games, and we expect to be able to fly certain aircrafts, either planes or helis, and we expect tanks and other vehicles. Aside from that, we also expect classes, such as Medic, Assault, Support, Scout, etc. We expect squads, and we expect a certain amount of players in order to make these games interesting. But what a lot of people also expect is a better experience or basically an improvement of the previous game. That's just a natural way of thinking as a gamer and as a human being. We see technical advances in our society and we just expect games to improve just the same. However, what we also expect are new things. We expect to see things and be able to do things in the new game that we couldn't do or couldn't see in the previous title. And for obvious reasons, without new features, a game series would quickly be boring and repetitive. Now on top of all that, I also of course have to mention bugs and game flaws. And there has been quite a number of them in the Battlefield series. And what some of us expect is that the bugs that we've seen in a previous title eventually should get fixed. This, however, has not happened as much as people would have wanted, since bugs that were present in the beta of Battlefield 1 are still present in Battlefield 5 long after release. So now, among the things that are new in Battlefield 5 compared to the previous titles that most of the players played before this game is the lack of spotting and attrition. Now, what attrition and the lack of spotting does to the game is that it makes the game uh, go towards what in Battlefield is more commonly known as hardcore. Now, of course, it's not entirely hardcore since hardcore also has a friendly fire and no spotting at all. In Battlefield 5, you still have spotting, it's just a lot less effective. What I also decided to do was to add a new animation to the game that has a really big impact on the overall flow. What I'm talking about is the revive animation, a feature that makes reviving a lot more risky for two main reasons. It makes reviving slower and it forces the reviving player into a position that is on top of the body of the player being revived. Now it's quite clear that there are a lot of players that are not too happy with these changes. Shouldn't be too much of a surprise to DICE actually, because Hardcore wasn't all that popular if you look at the overall amount of players playing Battlefield. So now the problem when you have this many changes, and I'm only bringing up a few of them, but the problem is that it's really hard to pinpoint what is wrong if there is something that is wrong. And there's no denying that something did go wrong. The question is more specifically, what? What are the more specific and the deciding factors that makes less people want to buy and play Battlefield 5 than expected based on the player base from Battlefield 1? Of course, this is the question that DICE are asking themselves. The big question is, however, are they ever going to really find out? The majority of the people that decided not to buy this game are not going to have their voices heard. Most of these people are not going to share their thoughts on Reddit or the official forum. And even if they do, it's of course really hard to know if uh, any of these threads are going to represent a majority or at least a big part of the player base that otherwise could have been part of Battlefield 5. And also remember, many of the people that actually do speak their minds often get met with quite hostile responses such as hater, flamer, whiner and stuff like that. 
And of course that makes it even harder for DICE to figure out why less people decided to buy this game than expected. So now we also have to talk about the political aspects of Battlefield 5 because of the strong reactions from the beta and the trailers. Genderfield 5, Battlefield Vagina, Social Justice Field 5 and so on. Now obviously if you're a journalist working on Swedish television then you're not gonna get this. That much is clear. Of course that's not gonna prevent him from lying about it, pretending he knows what he's talking about, but by now most of us are quite used to the fact that uh, journalists normally are quite dishonest. So what about all those players that were so upset about this political correctness in a otherwise seemingly unpolitical game series? Now as much as I could go further back in time, I'm going to start analyzing this based on the previous title, Battlefield 1, which was a game based on World War 1. And this is actually quite important. And the reason why it's important is that there are many aspects of Battlefield 1 that are historically correct. Now graphically or visually, Battlefield 1 is extremely well made from a historical point of view. The weapons actually looks like the weapons that existed back then, even though a lot of the weapons that were popular in the game were very rare in the actual war. The same can be said about the vehicles. If you look at actual photos of the vehicles in World War I, tanks and armored cars and some such, and even planes, Battlefield 1 had that down almost perfectly. DICE also stayed true to what actually happened in World War I to a degree that was actually quite admirable. Fact is that Battlefield 1 made thousands and thousands of people very very interested in history in a way that they otherwise wouldn't be. That fact was perfectly clear by just following some of the threads on Reddit from the release of the game and up until about a year after. Now one of the effects with a game such as Battlefield 1 is that you get a very aware community or at least a part of the community will be very aware and will care a lot about history. It is of course understandable that DICE can't bring up every important event that happened in World War II, but the ones that are brought up in the game should at least to some degree be believable. When things are altered, then that should be for the sake of making a game, not for the sake of lying in order to please a certain group of people. Adolf Hitler did not have Asian women enlisted as soldiers fighting in the front lines of Europe during World War II. That didn't happen. It doesn't matter how much it hurts your feelings that that didn't happen. It doesn't matter how much you want that to have happened. It didn't happen. A big part of the war was the fact that Hitler was a racist and a bigot, among other things. Now to then also alter the story about how the Norwegian resistance blew up Hitler's factory for heavy water, which was needed for making an atomic bomb, and to turn that story into a feminist story about the relationship between a mother and her daughter, that kind of disrespect to the people that died in order to prevent Hitler from getting a new super weapon, that's just disgusting. There's no excuse and DICE should be ashamed of themselves. It's important to understand that this story is a lie and they're lying to a big group of people that are aware and that are interested in these things. And I have to say, it is really really surprising to me that DICE doesn't understand this on their own. Games like Battlefield 1 and Battlefield 5 requires quite a lot of historical research to then alter important historical facts for the sake of a political agenda that is going to upset a lot of people. Why is this even surprising? So now, as if this wasn't enough, the fact that an important thing such as uh, company coins is bugged, which means that a lot of players, even very very experienced players, can't upgrade their weapons and their vehicles, that is yet even another reason why some of the people that decided just to wait to see how the game turned out, simply won't buy it. So yeah, I know, there are a lot more that we could talk about in a video like this, and if I didn't bring up the reason why you are disappointed with Battlefield 5, then please share it in the comment section below. And of course, if you disagree with what I'm saying, and if you think that I'm exaggerating, if you think I'm wrong, if you are very happy with the game, then by all means share that as well and explain to me and the rest of us why. So yeah, the video will continue here with a few more minutes of M1A1 gameplay. My name is Matthias. And I want to thank you all for watching.
Wait, what the fuck? Or, or isn't it us who are Germans? I'm feeling like I'm shooting tigers all the time. Isn't 